Hello and welcome to digi8.com. In this video, we are going to cover the topic on sampling. Now let's start with the definition of sampling. Sampling is a method to pick a section of the population or a few people and use them to come to statistical conclusions. One can use them to draw inferences about the entire population. Market research involves a use of many kinds of sampling. Thus, they do not have to research the whole population to make decisions. It saves time and reduces cost. It is thus the foundational to any research design. For example, a soft drink manufacturer wants to launch a new flavor. They do not have to wait for the whole population to try and decide whether they like it or not. They can observe how various sample groups respond to their new drink in the study. Moving on to the types of sampling or I may say sampling methods. Broadly there are two types. One, probability sampling. This involves selection according to a specific number of factors. Individuals are then selected randomly. Here, every member has an equal chance to be picked in this technique with the selection criteria. Number two is non-probability. In this technique, individuals are selected on a random basis. There is no predetermined or fixed selection method. Not every element from the population finds an equal chance at representation. Now let's look at each one of them briefly with certain types. Starting with the first one, probability sampling. As stated earlier, probability sampling gets rid of the effect of bias in the population. All of the members have an equal opportunity to be part of the sample. For example, if there are 100 people, then the probability of a person getting picked is 1 on 100. Now let's look at the types of probability sampling. The first one, simple random sampling. In this technique, every participant is selected randomly. It is simple and effective. Everyone has an equal chance of being selected. Example, for doing a quality check of products in a factory, a sample of products may be selected entirely randomly. Next, cluster sampling. In this technique, the whole population gets grouped into multiple clusters. These represent the whole population. These groups are made according to demographic factors such as location, sex, age, etc. Example, a polling service might want to see how many people will be voting in an upcoming election. They might wish to know how gender, ethnicity, religion, etc. would decide the people's voting pattern. Next, next, systematic sampling. In this technique, members are picked after fixed gaps or intervals. This links two things. The first is a sample with a starting point and the second that it is repeatable after every interval. This technique uses a predetermined gap. Thus, it is the least time utilizing. For instance, a geological institute might wish to study soil samples along a stretch of river bank which is approximately 5 kilometers long. They might choose to collect a sample every 50 meters and thus end up with 100 soil samples over the entire stretch. And fourth, stratified random sampling. In this method, the population is split into multiple groups. There is no overlap between them. They also cover the entire population. A sample from every group can be picked separately after the groups are appropriately arranged. Benefits of probability sampling are pretty clear. First, sample created is the representative of population. Next, it can be used on a diverse population. And finally, it decreases bias in sample. Now let's look at the final four types of non-probability sampling. First, convenient sampling. This technique relies on ease to access to the people being sampled. This can be outside a movie theater or in a section of a city with many pedestrians. This is generally called convenient sampling because the people conducting the poll can easily reach out to the sample. The people conducting the study cannot decide the sample selected. That depends on the proximity to the people. The sample does not rely on representative factors. For instance, when breweries wish to launch a new beer, they send pollsters to bars and restaurants and offer samples of the beverage for free. They thus collect people's feedback on it. Next, judgmental or purposive sampling. These samples are created at the researcher's discretion. Prior knowledge of the population and study's goals help decide the sample and its size. Example, a study might try to see what motivates people's real estate buying decisions. Questioner can ask, do you wish to buy a resident or invest in the property in the next five years? Those who are not interested will respond with no. These people can then be kept out. Third, snowball sampling. This technique is used when sample members are hard to locate. Example, this method is used when the underlying issue is sensitive. It might not be out in the open. For instance, studying HIV AIDS. Patients are not open with answers. People conducting the study might reach out to the victims they are aware of. Thus, the snowball effect. And finally, quota sampling. A predetermined criteria decides who gets to be a member of the sample. The sample is made according to select qualities, for instance, men above the age of 60. It must represent the whole population though. This is a swift technique to get samples. So that's it folks. This brings an end to the topic on sampling. These are some of the sources and links referred to for the content in the video. Thank you and see you in the next video.